Hi, welcome to the Nurse Station. I'm Maria Mobley, and today we're going to learn about heart failure. So, uh, heart failure is a very extensive disease. Um, please look, this is part one. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about heart failure and how our clients look. What is their assessment? How do they present? And the complications that can be associated with heart failure. Part two, the next video is going to talk about patient education. What do we need to tell these clients? in terms of how can they best meet optimal outcomes and also medications used to treat heart failure and the assessment that presents with it. So I'm keeping it very basic, just so y'all know, heart failure can be acute versus chronic. It can be classified into multiple um, categories, class one to class four. There's a lot of different diagnosis or there's a lot of different ways that the healthcare provider can actually diagnose the client and also the type of heart failure that the client may have. However, as a nurse, it's our responsibility to understand how does heart failure look in our client and also to look for complications that can occur associated with heart failure. So I'm keeping it pretty basic, um, very, very basic definition. Heart failure is the impaired pumping ability of the heart. So let's just do a brief uh, A&P of how the heart works. Y'all know I can't draw. We've been through this multiple times. These are not boobs. This is the lungs. This is a hand, meaning to the rest of our tissues, and this is a body. So there's my drawing. Um, but let's just do a quick uh, review of how the blood flows through the heart, okay? So once our body utilizes our oxygen for our tissues, our cells, you know, for our metabolic demands, that comes back to our heart via two large veins, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. And of course, this blood is deoxygenated, deoxygenated, meaning it's not carrying oxygen until it gets to that lung to, for gas exchange to occur. So it drops to our right atrium, which goes through our tricuspid valve to our right ventricle. And then the pulmonary artery takes deoxygenated blood to the lungs. And remember, my students always think arteries always carry oxygenated blood. How I get them to try to best remember it is arteries are always going away from the heart. Do you see how this, the pulmonic valve allows the artery to carry blood away from the heart? So think about it that way because this blood is not oxygenated. Then the pulmonic artery takes it to our lungs. I know, I know, just bear with me. Our lungs allow for gas exchange in the alveoli for CO2 and oxygen to be exchanged. So oxygen can go into our blood and the pulmonic vein carries it to the left atrium. It goes through the uh, bicuspid or mitral valve. They're used um, universally to the left ventricle and the left ventricle is the primary um, portion of our heart that ejects majority of our oxygenated blood into our aorta and the aorta carries it to all of the tissues, cells, organs in our body so that oxygen can be utilized, okay? So basic flow of blood through the heart. Now heart failure, again, the healthcare provider can have multiple classes of heart failure, acute versus chronic. Um, heart failure can occur from so many things. You have a heart attack, it could damage the heart's muscle to pump. Uh, you have valvular problems it can cause an effective pumping of the heart. There's so many causes of heart failure and so many classifications. I wanna keep it very, very basic. Right-sided versus left-sided heart failure. Um, and of course, both sides can fail um, and lead to severe life-threatening complications such as pulmonary edema and things like that, but let's keep it, keep it basic. So let's think about the sides of our heart and how the blood flows. Let's talk about right-sided heart failure first and how it would look in our client. This is the right side of our heart, our right atrium and our right ventricle. So just picture our blood flowing, 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 flowing. Now, the, this side of the heart cannot pump effectively. What is going to happen? The blood is going to start to back up. So instead of it shooting effectively into the pulmonic artery, it's going to start to back up and start to back up and start to back up. And if you think about the SVC and the IVC, think about how many veins drop into 
these large vessels, your hepatic vein, your splenic vein, so many things bring deoxygenated blood to these big, two big ve uh, vessels, two big veins to get back to the heart so we can get our oxygenated blood again, right? So when it starts to back up, when you think right-sided heart failure, I want you to stick in your head peripheral tissue congestion. Now all this blood is backing up through our large veins. This client will present with edema, with weight gain, with JVD, jugular vein distension, okay? Um, it will continue to back up into the veins that pour into the SVC and IVC. That's why it can cause hepatomegaly. The liver can get enlarged. The spleen can get enlarged. Fluid can build up into the peritoneal cavity, aka ascites. You need to think with right-sided, you have peripheral tissue congestion, edema, weight gain. Any vessel that drops into the SVC and IVC, that fluid can now start backing up into the organ that is associated with that vessel. So that's again why hepatomegaly and splenomegaly can occur. Now let's look at the left side of the heart. So again, the pulmonic vein with our oxygenated blood is supposed to be traveling effectively. The left atrium should effectively pump it into the left ventricle. The left ventricle should effectively pump it into our aorta and our aorta should take oxygenated blood to the rest of our tissues. But now these, now the left side of the heart is not working effectively. When you think about the left side of the heart not working effectively, I want you to think about it as a two-fold problem. First off, the left ventricle, which is the, the, the best resource, the best entity of the heart to push oxygenated blood to the rest of our body, is not working effectively. If the left ventricle cannot effectively pump oxygenated blood to our aorta, so our aorta can take that oxygen to the, our cells and tissues, you will have decreased cardiac output. So I want you to think twofold. One is related to decreased cardiac output because again, there is not an effective pump or ejection of oxygenated blood from our left ventricle into our aorta. The other thing I want you to think about is where does this blood back up to for left-sided heart failure? We're not thinking peripheral tissue congestion like we would when we see it back up into the SVC and IVC. We are thinking it is backing up into our pulmonary vein and therefore it is backing up into our lungs. So twofold part with left-sided failure. Pulmonary congestion, lung congestion with all the fluid backing up into our lungs. And then because of the ineffective ability for that left ventricle to pump oxygenated blood to the rest of our body, decreased cardiac output. So how does somebody with pulmonary congestion look? Dyspnea, tachypnea, so elevated respiratory rate, crackles. We have too much fluid on our lungs. We don't want fluid in our lungs. When we auscultate with our stethoscope, we can hear an adventitious breath sound called crackles. Uh, cough, orthopnea, difficulty breathing while laying flat, dyspnea on exertion, that's what DOE stands for. All of those respiratory symptoms associated with heart failure, you need to think it's related to that blood backing up into our lungs, causing pulmonary congestion. And then the second part is decreased cardiac output because of the left ventricle's inability to pump as effectively. So this can result, you have less oxygenated blood going to the rest of your body, isn't your heart gonna pump faster? It's gonna to try to pump faster because it wants to try to circulate more blood. So tachycardia, it can result in palpitations, weak pulses. So when we have decreased cardiac output, if I need to get oxygen to my periphery, how is this gonna look? It's decreased now. I could have a weak, thready pulse. When I feel the skin, it can be cool and clammy. So everything related to decreased perfusion, you need to think about is associated with decreased cardiac output, okay? So again, right-sided heart failure, think peripheral tissue congestion, the weight gain, edema, enlarged organs, a JVD, big bellies, ascites. Then you're left-sided, you need to think lungs and you need to think decreased cardiac output. So I've tried to keep it very basic and I hope this helps you. And in terms of the diagnosis, there are so many ways that healthcare providers 
diagnose a client with heart failure. Remember, acute versus chronic, different classifications, but big diagnosis that are used is an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is a diagnostic tool that can look at the size, the shape, your ejection fraction. So when this heart starts to pump ineffectively, there's a lot of things that happen. It can try to develop more muscle tone. It can get enlarged. We don't want enlarged uh, ventricles of our heart. Um, it can start to stretch to try to allow more blood to fill so hopefully we can pump more out to the rest of our body. So with heart failure, you can have stretched ventricles, a stretched atrium, you can have enlarged hearts. Uh, so looking at the size, the shape, ejection fraction, we need our left ventricle to pump oxygenated blood effectively to our aorta so our aorta can take it to the rest of our body. But our ejection fraction can absolutely be affected when our heart cannot pump effectively. So an echocardiogram, typically they do it with a Doppler as well, can absolutely uh, show or diagnose heart failure. We need to get labs on these clients. So we have decreased oxygen being pumped to our aorta. Could this client be anemic? We need to look at their CBCs. These clients can absolutely look at all these signs of fluid volume overload from edema, weight gain, crackles. They can have too much fluid. What has it done to our electrolytes, our basic metabolic panel? Has it diluted? our electrolyte levels. How has it affected our kidneys? I put oliguria here. We have decreased cardiac output. Isn't the little oxygen that we get to, the, to our body gonna shunt to our vital organs? If we can only get so much oxygen into our aorta, won't our body try to cope and shoot it to our heart, lungs, and brain, our vital organs? Well, can that result to a lack of perfusion to our kidneys? Oliguria, scant urine, decreased urine output. It could lead to a complication of kidney failure. So we need to look at BUN and creatinine levels. And I really wanted to put this up here, BNP. This is a specific lab that really looks at heart failure. When our heart starts to fail, and I always say R, but you understand our clients. When our heart starts to fail, the stretching of the ventricles creates this uh, BNP and the level starts to elevate when the ventricles or the heart continues to stretch and stretch. So clients with heart failure, you're gonna see an elevated BNP level. Um, and we absolutely draw this level and look at it and monitor it to see how, how um, severe heart failure is. And also hopefully has treatment worked when we have started to, for instance, diurese and put them on a fluid and sodium restricted diet, things like that, which I'll talk about in the second video. Also, remember in this NCLEX perfect world, these NCLEX style questions, you need to know how your client looks. I can, left-sided and right-sided heart failure are the perfect select all that apply questions. The nurse is caring for a client in right-sided heart failure. What manifestations can the nurse anticipate for the client with this disorder. Select all that apply. So if I say um, weight gain, true. If I say JVD, true. If I say crackles, not true, because right side is backing up into the SVC, IVC. It's not backing up into the lungs. So really know your right sided versus left sided. Great um, ability for select all that apply questions. Know that the heart can fail right-sided and left-sided together. And then also, you always, always need to think about your complications. I did put up a couple more diagnostic tools such as x-ray, CT, MRIs. There's so many tools that healthcare providers can utilize to diagnose heart failure. But in this NCLEX perfect world, if your client has a diagnosis of heart failure, when you're answering these NCLEX style questions, we know they have a diagnosis and we know that certain manifestations, right, present. Okay, and of course, if your teacher gives you more manifestations for left sided versus right sided, I'm sorry, right sided versus left sided, add it onto your chart. Do visual depiction so it's easier for you to remember. But you always need to look for your complications. Heart failure can lead to arrhythmias. This heart can't beat effectively or pump effectively, it can start to mess with the electrical impulse of the heart. And arrhythmia is a complication of heart failure. Clients can develop AFib from heart failure. So look for those complications. That is priority 
to go and see, priority to assess for. We already talked about how kidney failure can occur. If our heart can't pe uh, pump effectively, the little oxygenated blood it gets into that aorta, remember, it will shunt to our vital organs, our heart, lung, and brains. So we can perfuse those organs. Your kidneys are not gonna be perfused over those organs we need to sustain our life, so it can result in kidney failure. Is your client producing 30 mLs of urine per hour? What does their BUN and creatinine levels look like? You need to look for liver damage, anemia, hypoxia. We're not pumping oxygenated blood, but what does their pulse ox look like? Hypoxia can present in so many ways. Do they have a decreased level of consciousness? Are they combative? Are they restless? Are they irritable? Look for that change in behavior because heart failure clients, we absolutely may need a place on oxygen. And pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is a life-threatening condition that results when we have too much fluid and congestion around our lungs and our heart. So we need to look for those signs of pulmonary edema. Right here, right now, life-threatening complication. So again, basic outline or overview of heart failure, the difference between right-sided and left-sided, and of course, know your assessment data associated with your disease, but make sure to always if it says what is priority to report, if you have a diagnosis, you need to report signs of complications, okay? So I hope this helped with the basic start and overview of heart failure. Look for part two, where we will go into medications, we will go into patient education, and just what can we do to um, help our clients meet optimal outcomes and also to evaluate that our interventions as nurses helped the client, okay? Well, take care.